here welcome to another episode on life with Omoto Mike and today we're discussing sex education and today with me on this show I have a very important guest guys a very very important one and um, I'm so lucky and blessed to have her here she is popularly known as the fixer yes she is the president for the Association of um, Counseling and Psychotherapy of Nigeria she is. She's also one of Africa's foremost sex therapists. Did you get that? Should I repeat it? I'm sure you can. Also, she is a professional mental health practitioner. I'm continuing. I, I'm, not, I'm not stopping there. <laughs> she also specializes in personality disorders. She specializes in family dynamics and um, Maybe sex and sexuality. <laughs> sex and sexuality, guys. Like she said, please, guys, welcome with me today on the show, Dr. Tolu Oko Igaire. Thank you. That was a beautiful one. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank, you Thank you for having me on your Thank show. Thank you so much. Well Thank done. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Well, Dr. Tolu, uh, my first question is um, How can one practice safe sex? So talking about uh, prevention, a lot of I mean, a lot of people use uh, money after pills. Talking to the doctor, using after money pill, which I feel might not be hundred percent accurate mm -hmm. sometimes. And again, but most importantly, people should learn about sex education because I think if you know how to calculate your safe period very well, um, of course we know that God is the Almighty and there yeah, is possible that. But if you are good at calculating very well, I think you can actually avoid unwanted pregnancies. Mm -hmm. So people should know their safe period, the ovulation period, you know, and then understand the use of condom as well you know so the use of condom understanding how to calculate very well very very important and then the use of uh, maybe talking to medical doctors who could probably look for other things that could help them other for the other forms of contraception yes. and then the money after peace. So i think we talked about four different things yeah. people should also be um especially for girls ladies they should be uh, they should have the capacity to have sex when they want to and when they, they and say no when, when they do they not want to, to. I think it, that's a very big problem in this yes. part of the world. We were trained and conditioned to be very um, placid, so it's difficult to ask questions. It's difficult to so even when a lot of them want to have sex, they don't have that strong will, or they don't want to have it, and maybe the other party is trying to compel them. They do not have that strong will mm -hmm. to say I do not want mm -hmm. to. So I think that is very important to know that you know what you are getting into. You are ready for it, mm -hmm. you know, and then you are well prepared. You know the consequences, and you know you are protected if you really want yes. to. To get into it. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So much wisdom. <laughs> so so much wisdom. Thank you so much, Ma. I believe sexual education begins from home. Um, please, I I love you too. Tell the parents watching um, how they can educate their children because I think most of them they are probably I don't know if they are shy or something, but they don't do it. Maybe some do it, but they are not doing it enough. Mm -hmm. Because I believe we can avoid most of the things happening nowadays. And mm -hmm. I'm sure it has been happening for a long time. Mm -hmm. Internet just brought it out. Yeah, yeah. So people are reporting more. Yes, people are Right. So more. so I think for us as a society we have this problem of shaming people. You know, so the stigma is a problem, stigmatization is an issue. So because of that people would rather keep their problems. Right. So but I don't think I mean even in my in my years of practice, I've seen a lot of issues where, I mean, two years, three years, and people will feel like, you know what, I mean, I heard, you know, saying, you know, maybe not directly one-on-one -on -one with me because I'm a mandated reporter, you know. So people have seen, I mean, I've seen such situations where people will feel like, ah, people must not hear, they will look down on my daughter, or the person will not see somebody to marry. I don't think people should be thinking about who is going to marry you. Is that the next thing? Because a child that is being raped could live with the trauma for the rest of 
her or his life. Or there is the generational trauma that comes with rape. The PTSD is so is so quantifiable. You know, something that could happen to somebody that happened to somebody at when the person is seven years old could live with the person. Could, could you could even start seeing the impact on the person's personality, social relationship, performance, and mental health. You could start seeing it when the person is 20, 30, you know, 40. You know, so it could it could mess up a whole generation. Imagine somebody that was raped, getting married, and then the person probably is frigid, for example, mm. develop frigidity, for example. Imagine the person getting married to your son in future, and then when the person got married to your son, they started having sexual problem. Imagine a marriage without sex and then maybe imagine the implication maybe they are able to maybe stumble through it and have a child or two and then they started having problem imagine the kind of children that are going to come out of that place toxic marriage you know dysfunctional family already you know because no sex mm. they, maybe they keep fighting mm. and then they have children the children sees their parents fighting these children are becoming dysfunctional mm. and the person you know so the ripple effect is crazy so if people understand this, they will, they will, they will understand what this education means. The first step is to break that barrier. Be friends to your children. Be friends to your children. Break that, you know, that barrier. Give them the opportunity to be able to say anything, whatever. Ask questions. Don't be a terror that they cannot look up to. A lot of children. I mean, as a professional therapist, you see that when you talk to teenagers and. You know, there are ways you talk to them. There are ways you... If you don't understand the professional skills that is involved in talking to teenagers, in most cases, they will tell you, oh, you're acting like my mom. Oh, you're talking like my mom. And they don't want to open up to you. It means that there are things that the parents are not doing the right way that are making them not to open up. But in a simple way, break that barrier. Break that wall. Make your child to be able to walk up to you and say, Mommy, what does it mean if I see blood in my pants? What does it mean? A boy tried to kiss me today. A boy tried to touch my breast today. What does it mean? Not that you say, hey, and the child will feel like, oh, what, what just happened? What did I do? You know, so break that barrier. That is a, in fact, that is the foundation to everything so that they could walk up to you and tell you anything. And then we need to start beginning to teach our children not to be placid not to be docile, to be able to have a mind of their own, to be able to ask questions. If you teach your child, you know, you don't want your child to ask you questions. When an adult is talking, a child does not talk. When that child is being touched, he will not be able to talk as well because you put it in his head that he must not talk. You should bring up your child in a way that they can ask anybody question not that they are timid they are afraid they are squared i mean they are scared they should be able to say excuse me what are you trying to do or oh, if you tell your mommy i will kill you they should be able to say no they should be able to stand up to you so we should train them to be able to stand up for themselves to be able to ask questions yes. if they cannot ask us as parents they might not be able to ask outside right thank you thank you very much um this is Sex Education on Live with Omotomike. Keep watching. I believe young teenagers, I, I don't know if I should say they are vulnerable because most of them just end up getting pregnant or is it the abstinence they don't understand? But, but my question now is, how, how can people practice abstinence? Um, talking about... Um, abstinence, I think the reason why it's more difficult these days is the world is a global village and so you put your phone is <laughs> porn is everywhere you don't you are not even soliciting for it they are dropping it you know you are putting on your phone and they are sending it to you so it makes it more difficult to be celibate or to be to abstain like you call it you know so uh, um, the, the world is not making it easy, the environment is not making it easy, it's easy, the society is not making it easy. And I think for us, especially for us as Africans, I think we live in a lot of ignorance and I think we live in denial. Mm. And I think our parenting style is terrible. Mm. It's terrible. Parenting is negotiation. Mm. And I don't think we understand that as Africans. Parenting is negotiation. It's asking how should we do it but for us as african parents we don't negotiate we tell the child and the child just obeys and just like i said earlier they will still obey a stranger because the person is an adult mm -hmm. now talking about abstinence number one step is love 
what do I mean by that? There is need for somebody to love himself or herself. So let's talk maybe majorly about the girls now. They need to love themselves and then they need to witness love in their homes. Mm. Now, so for a lot of them, they are looking for it, it's more like a dysfunctional state, mm. you know, as a result of our, you know parenting style or upbringing what we call african culture or value you know so because a lot of parents are not warming up to their children a lot of parents are not you know they, they don't have that close relationship so most of these teenagers there is a stage they are they get to yeah. especially at that early teenage yeah. stage they, it's it's important to them to get validation from the opposite sex yeah. if they are heterosexual in most cases especially at least in this yes. part of the world yeah so that validation from the opposite sex is huge mm. so if you have a girl child and you are a father and your a girl child could not say to daddy what's up cannot hug you cannot say oh daddy or you know there's a way you know you yeah. greet and all of that if you don't have those kind of relationship mm. and then if she finds i mean she finds a man who is able to give all of that now if it's a child that have all of that you know it's not new it's no big deal you know and then you know so but that validation is huge for them at that stage you see that early stage you know that it's more like going to early adulthood you know when they are getting to like um late uh, i mean early teenage you know to early adulthood so between 12 actually it's usually start from ar around age 12 to like 17 mm. you know those period oh it's so huge for them for a boy to say you are beautiful oh you are cute oh those things mean so lot to them but if you're a child that gets all of that from your home somebody is saying it to you it's not going to look like wow so it makes them to be very vulnerable mm. so love is huge and that's what i mean by that mm. and then secondly of course talking about sex education is a huge part you know because the only thing you tell a child is uh if you have sex you will die if you have sex you will go to hell if a boy tells touch touches you you will get pregnant that is not it it's more like like i said it's it's, it's, it's lazy parenting yeah. you know give them deep explanation as to the meaning of all of the numbers just uh, you know it's like it save our parents the headache of explaining everything yeah. you know so that education is not there so a lot of people are abstaining without knowing why so they are standing without knowing why they don't know why they are celibate they don't know they don't even they don't love themselves mm. they don't know that oh my body is is so very uh, prestigious is so important to me they don't understand that i have sex when i want to not because anybody wants me to they don't have those understandings so it's more like i am celibate because if a man touch me i will get pregnant or my pastor says so or mommy even say so without explanation mm. the explanation is for them to begin to know what you know what i am killed so it starts from the first part i am beautiful i am honorable i have the right over my body i can have sex when i want to and i know the reason why i want to have sex mm -hmm. not because somebody is telling me to uh, to have it or not because somebody is putting a lot of fear in my mind so when you put too much fear and somebody try to just talk to them and help them to you know say oh, forget about all of those it's not like that now mm -hmm. that's so it's easy for the person to penetrate so more about love from home more about parenting more of them also understanding themselves and knowing why they do what they do celibacy becomes easy mm. abstinence becomes easy when you understand your worth mm. as an individual mm. and then you understand the reason why you are doing what you do mm. okay ma'am so my last question for today what, what do you think about abortion i think when somebody is matured you know the person should be allowed to dictate what happened to his or her body, her body in this, in this case, and I think um, people should be able to make the best decision for themselves, weigh their options, and do what they think is right for them at that particular time. Thank you so much, ma'am, for that answer. That was a beautiful answer. And yeah, it's it's an end on this episode. Please, guys, thank Dr. Tolu for you know she has given us our time and you know. I'm, I'm so happy that she could join me today on the show um, and we hope 
that when we call you again anytime thank i'm supporting you 100 percent. you are doing so a good much. job thank and you. i love what you're thank doing you so, so much, right? thank right. you so much ma'am okay i'm sure you guys have learned a lot on this show because dr tolu has given us a lot of professional advice and i'm sure you've been able to pick a lot so please Thank you for watching this episode and do not forget to subscribe, like and share with your friends as well. See you again on Sex Education. Still alive with Omatumike. Bye guys. Bye. <laughs> Thanks so much. Man.